so I'm starting to work cutting out the skirt pieces right now. And when you get the skirt pieces, you're going to notice, and you try to pin them to your lovely folded in half 44 inch width fabric from Joann's, uh, you're going to notice that your skirt panels are probably going to be a little too large to fit on the panel, uh, on the width of the fabric. And that's okay. Um, we're going to lose probably about, mm, on the skirt front panel, about an inch or so. Um, you can see it here, how I folded it um, right down the front. Um, and you can see how I folded it. And you can see over here on this bottom edge that it's just um, barely hitting the selvage. And um, that's okay because the way the skirt wedges are going to be inserted, even if we lose a little bit on each of the panels, especially uh, in the hem area, um, we are going to have uh, plenty, plenty of uh, skirt because of the wedges ad added to it. And with this particular skirt being um, as fully gathered as it is, uh, even on your largest girls, you're going to, you should have more than enough fabric to uh, make it pleat really nicely. Um, it's your call if you want to with your larger girls to go ahead and add more at the waist. Um, you know, you can play with the skirt pattern as necessary and make, um, but you know, just get the general uh, angle of the top of the skirt piece cut correctly. Um, and then you can also add length at the bottom. I have not marked it out yet, but I'm going to add um, this skirt panel um, on the side seam is 43 inches long for this skirt pattern. Um, I'm adding a couple of inches when I'm pre-cutting for Katie's dress, just to be on the safe side with seam allowance, with hem hem allowance and whatnot. Um, and if I need to raise it, I can raise it. I'm not worried about it. Um, but this is part A of our skirt tutorial. Thank you. So I have cut out the front skirt piece and the back skirt piece, and um, same thing on this back skirt piece. I had to probably fold it in the panel, mm, probably about three quarters of an inch total, um, to fit on the um, width of the fabric. For the skirt side front and the skirt side back pieces, I have opened up the fabric to its full 44 inch width and uh, laid the panels for these two pieces out on them and as you can see they're pinned uh, the skirt side back I'm probably losing about two inches uh, you can see here um, two inches overall and on the skirt side front it's probably about one and three quarters of an inch you know just whatever works for you whatever you know however the fold works and you can see that I have it cut um, the piece is pinned pretty close together so that I'm going to pretty much cut straight up that um, line between the two of them and that'll be my, well, that'll be the piece. And then up at the very end of the fabric you can see I probably have about um, maybe one and a half yards. Maybe a little bit less, I'm not certain. Um, we'll see how much I have left over. Um, and those are going to be that up there is going to be what I wind up using for the bodice panels. Thank you. I have the skirt panels can mostly put together, not completely. I have sewn at the top seams, at the tops of all of the panels. On the seam between the skirt panel, skirt front, and the skirt side front, I only sewed down to probably about, well, let's see here, let's just pull out the ruler, uh, just about 17 inches or so down, um, and I left the rest of the seam open because I still have to insert the wedges. As you can see, I have one of the wedges laid out here. Um, I don't have it inserted yet. 
I am not certain what my length on Katie's skirt is going to need to be. So that's why I left this opening and I did it at both the both of the seams between the skirt front and the skirt side front panels as well as both of the seams between the side back and the back skirt panels so that I can insert the four wedges once I have determined what the length is going to be. My next step is going to be attaching the skirt to the bodice and then I will do a fitting. I probably am going to put the zipper in before I put the skirt wedges in uh, just so that I know exactly how it's fitting Katie on the bodice and I am only going to have to measure once for the length and then once I've measured for the length of the skirt panels I will trim my excess fabric at the end of the skirt and I will insert the wedges which will have piping on them of course and then I will put my final hem in the skirt. The skirt and bodice have been attached and as you can see when I zoom in here um, at the bodice front piece the uh, piping comes down to a nice V and the pleat here um, is just folded in and as I scan along each of the um, set from one side to the other you can see that it's just um, pretty fairly even pleat you know half three quarters of an inch wide or so uh, pleat with uh, as necessary for you to fit your bodice um, and skirt pieces together it's not something that we're going to be looking at we just want the skirts to be pleated to the dress and um, I dare anyone to figure out where Katie's pocket is uh, which side of the skirt it's on because I think I did a pretty good job of getting it in there and getting it concealed now we are inserting the wedges into the skirt when I tried my full dress on Katie my skirt length was perfect I was very ecstatic by the way about that because how many times do you nail a skirt length perfectly? Um, Katie's about five four, five four and a half maybe, and um, I added two inches of length to the skirt panels when I cut them out, and my skirt length is perfect. It was just skimming the floor for her. So the wedges for me, all I am doing is I am inserting them starting at the bottom and I'm just pinning it and I'll use a zipper foot to um, attach it and then on one side and then I'm going to do the same on the other side and I will just close up this seam here and make a point um, and finish up this seam and close up this oh what five inches of fabric here um, that's open and then I will do that for each and every wedge and the what and then I'll put the hem in the skirt now my trick for inserting the wedges is I don't sew it the wedge completely up I leave probably as you can see about a quarter of an inch of the seam allowance open and I'm going to do that on the other side as well and I will show you how I insert the wedge so that I get a nice finished seam on my next little clip. Here we are with the wedge sewn on both edges and as you can see I have a little bit of extra here. What I'm doing is I'm folding this back and I'm going to sew a seam from here out to the edge of my fabric and that is going to form the point for the wedge. Now you can see close up that I have this seam sewn here. Center in the 
frame a little bit more. And when I turn this, what you see is a nice lovely little point. And now I'm just going to finish closing up this particular seam on the skirt panel. And as you can see here, I finished sewing up this seam that was open where I left it. And here is the wedge inserted. And you know, the wedges probably aren't going to be quite perfect right up here at the piping. I got lucky on this one. Um, I didn't get lucky on my other three, but it's okay. I mean, you know, it's close enough for government work because my attitude is if somebody's looking that closely at your dress, then they're looking too closely at it. And so you can see how the wedge gets inserted on each side and all that's left is the hem. Yay! One last thing about the skirt. Taffeta has a tendency to fray quite badly. And even just in sewing this, you can see a little bit of fraying here on the edges, which is actually pretty darn good, um, given that I cut this taffeta a few weeks ago. Um, but here along the edges of the wedge, um, where it attaches to the skirt, I made a personal choice to serge these seams and um, it's something that if you have a serger or you have access to a serger I would recommend that you do it um, just so the dress isn't fraying, the skirt isn't fraying. Um, but you don't have to but I made a personal choice that I was going to do so on my skirt.